All right, so welcome everybody. I'm Donna and I am also known as the Urban Mommy and I am here for a new podcast. The topic today is traveling for mental health and I'm here with Tyler Wikowski and he is going to talk about exactly what I just said, traveling for mental health. So he has an interesting story. So first I want to say welcome Tyler and thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Donna. I'm super excited to be here and uh, get to sit down and chat with you about what's going on and traveling for mental health. Awesome. Okay, so I know you are you're an author. You actually have several books. Um, I was looking, and I love those titles. We're gonna talk about that soon. Um, you have several books. You're a podcaster two times. Um, you're a travel blogger. You're. I mean, you do a lot. So. That's in your bio, but can you tell me who Tyler is? Tyler is a um, jack of all trades, master of none, but that's better than a master of one. Um, <laughs> it, I, I I love being able to just stay busy to do things and to help people. Um, and that's what really s- sparked my passion for doing everything that I'm doing from my indie publishing company to my nonprofit market nonprofit marketing company. Um, it's all meant to help people in need, help the underserved, help um, the people who are being put down and quieted. You know, it's time for them to stand up and, and, and use their voice. And I'm here to help and you and lift a uh, or extend a helping hand for people. Um, to me, that's the biggest gift in life is to be able to use your blessings and be able to help other people grow and be able to help them get to the point where you are. You know, I'm at a point in my life where I'm happy and now I'm trying to help other people be happy because, you know, without happiness, what is there to life? Right. That's so true. Okay. All right. I like that answer. So where are you from, Tyler? I am from uh, a little place called Leland, North Carolina. Uh, it is right outside of Wilmington, um, in between Wilmington, North Carolina, and Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Um, it's on the beach, uh, or not on the beach, but about 15 minutes from the beach. I went to school at the beach, so that was nice. Uh, spent a lot of time at the beach and not at school, but don't, <laughs> don't tell my mom that. Uh, I heard. But yeah, so yeah, from North Carolina, and you know, like you mentioned, right now, I'm I actually we sold our house um, in Leland uh, back in May and moved into an RV full time, and we've been traveling full time since uh, the end of April, beginning of May, and we've just been creating memories and just unforgettable experiences. That is. Awesome. I, I love that. that. That's probably um, one of my dream jobs is to travel for a living. Like, that's awesome. All right. So what made you become a travel blogger? Um, my wife and I uh, decided a couple of years or about a year and a half ago to buy an RV. We decided that um, her parents had moved into an RV a couple of years prior and, um, you know, we were like, it's such a cool lifestyle. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more minimalistic and it would be nice to use it as a getaway. So at first we were going to use it as a getaway and do little blog posts here and there to try to, you know, bring in some extra funds to support tea with coffee media, um, the indie publishing company that I mentioned earlier. And whenever we decided to go full time, it was like, okay, well, you know, we've already got this idea for the blog. I'd already had a logo created. I had already put together the website, and the social media accounts. And we had started promoting some stuff. We were taking little trips here and there, um, staying in Airbnbs and hotels and things like that while we were waiting on tags for the RV. And we just discovered that we loved so much just spending time together and taking pictures and, talking about the food that was in front of us or the beer that we were drinking or the coffee that we were having or whatever it was, Um, you know, just being able to enjoy these experiences together was such a magical feeling. And so we wanted to share that with other people and give other people a taste of our adventure who 
may not be able to leave their jobs or may not be able to leave their homes at the moment and they can live vicariously through us for now and that was kind of our our goal was to give other people a taste of what we're experiencing um for again for those people who may not be able to do that right okay um so so far um so basically you you, you just started the travel blogging back in april uh, no, we actually started that last year, um, okay. back in 2022. Uh, okay. It was probably about halfway through the year, so I'd say probably about June of 2022, so about a year ago. Go okay. Ahead. All right. So, so far, what's been your favorite place to travel? Oh, um, I love Mayberry Campground in uh, Mount Airy, North Carolina. It is, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the Andy Griffith show, but that's mm -hmm. where the Andy Griffith show is based on is Mount Airy. Oh, wow. Um, my wife has family who lives there. Um, and that's where her sisters are. And we went to Mayberry campground for our first stay ever in the RV and we fell in love. Um, we stayed for two weeks at that time. The last time we went, we stayed for an entire month. Uh, we're going back in September and we're staying for another week wow. and then um, we're actually headed out west come uh, 2024 and then we'll be circling back around towards the end of the year to go back to Mayberry in 2024. Nice. So how do you plan your destinations? Um, so we use uh, an app called RV Life and uh, it's a subscription based app and it has a lot of different resources. Um, you know, you can, it's got a GPS that's custom tailored to your RV. You put in the make and model of your RV and it calculates the weight and the length and the height and gives wow. you the best routes based on that. So, you know, we look at, we, we try not to drive overnight. Um, you know, we try to make six hour trips at the very maximum. Um, so, you know, with all that in mind, we started looking at, okay, where do we want to go first? Um, we jumped down to South Carolina because we've got family down there. Um, our goddaughter lives there and absolutely want to go see her before we leave. Um, but so we decided to start there and then we decided to hop across the, uh, across the States and just see where life takes took us so we got onto a map of the united states um on the rv life app and started looking at available campgrounds and we said you know what this looks like a good campground they've got good ratings um they're an affordable price so we booked it and um you know we we just planned it out like that we sat down one night and decided what we were going to do my wife and i together okay Nice. All right. So what place surprised you the most? What place that you probably weren't expecting to be so nice, but you actually found it to be quite nice? Fayetteville, West Virginia. Mm. Um, the, uh, the coolest small town in the United States of America is what they call themselves. Okay. Um, yeah, they, we, uh, we went to West Virginia for New Year's this year. Uh, and we went with my wife, her sister, her sister's boyfriend, and my wife's uh, father. And, you know, you hear all these things about West Virginia, and it has this bad connotation behind it. So, you know, coming into it, that's all I knew of West Virginia. I had never been to West Virginia until then. Mm -hmm. But whenever we got there, I mean... I'm a big a big brewery person. I do a lot of beer reviews whenever we do our travel blog. And they had so many great breweries that provided some like really quality beer and a really good vibe and atmosphere. And they had they were just some of the nicest people I've ever met. I mean, everybody there was just so willing to help you, you know. Obviously, I've got North Carolina tags on my car, so they know I'm not from there. Right. And they're still willing to, you know, just talk to me. Just be my friend, you know, just out for no reason other than they want to have a new friend or they just want to talk. Okay. Now, there's a, 
of um, people believe, there's a belief that people in the South are more friendly. Is that true? Um, I don't know, because I, I used to would say yes, but now you've got so many people moving to the southern beaches and the coast and that it's it's like a melting pot of the United yes. States. You know, the United States is already a melting pot. And now the south is becoming a melting pot because everybody's getting away from the north. Oh. Yeah, the cold. <laughs> that They're, is so true. So okay. um, I, I don't know. I, I think obviously every every state, every region has bad apples. But I think, um, you know, whenever you're in city life, it's definitely a different lifestyle than country life. Um, I'll just I'll put it that way. Yeah, I, I love country life, even though I live in the city. I live in New Orleans, but I love country life. I have been trying to move like for so long. I love the quiet country, peaceful, serene life. I love it like that RV life. That would be perfect for me. Yeah, it's that our house we lived back uh, whenever we lived in Leland, we had a house that was back in the middle of the woods and down Ooh. a dirt road. And we had, um, you know, a couple acres of land with a fenced in backyard. And, you know, we gave all that up for this lifestyle to be a little bit more simplistic. But, yeah, we've always been big fans of the minimalistic lifestyle, not being involved in the hustle and bustle and. I used to live in the city whenever I was in college, but it just wasn't the life for me. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, Tyler, I know you are really big on mental health and you said, and I know it has affected your life tremendously. Where did you find the courage to speak out on something that so many people try to conceal? So, uh, my wife, uh, gave me the courage to really come out of my shell, um, Whenever we first met, I kept my uh, mental illness a secret from her for uh, about the first couple, about six or seven months. Um, I kept it from her because I was so afraid that she would leave me, that she just didn't want to to be with somebody who had these slew of issues. And, um, you know, as time went on, she encouraged me to accept it as part of who I was and with that acceptance came a rekindled fire within me that I wanted to help people. And I've always wanted to help people, but I pivoted to, I want to help people like me, people who were struggling with their own thoughts, fighting the inner demons, you know, the people whose inner child is hurt and scarred and scared. You know, I wanted to help all those people who felt so alone because I knew what it was like to be like, be there. And so telling my story was just the way that I knew how to express myself. Um, always been a writer. My grandmother was an English teacher, huge inspiration in my life, and she encouraged me to write. And I was actually living with her the first time I wrote, uh, published a book. Um we were waiting for our house to be built. We were staying with her for a couple months and she kept pestering me about writing a book. And I finally said, okay, I'll do it. And I came up with the idea while I was coming home from work one day and no intentions of ever really talking about it or, you know, giving it to anybody outside of family to read. But once people started reading it, they were like, you've got to tell this story. You've got to publish this story. And so I did some edits and I said, you know what, I'll do it. And I went the self-publishing route and told my story. And so many people would thank me. And, you know, we, I used to do uh, my very first book signing was actually at a tattoo parlor uh, in Leland. So and the tattoo shop did a 15 percent off all mental health tattoos in conjunction for anybody who bought one of my books. So it was really wow. cool. Um a really cool thing, but so many people came and, you know, they would follow my Facebook page after we met and sit down and talk and tell them about the book and they would get their tattoo and they would message me a couple of weeks later after they finished the book. And they're just like, I want you to know this is the most inspirational thing I think I've ever seen in my life. You know, I am moved. I'm inspired. I'm feel empowered to be myself. And that 
was the feedback that I was looking for. I mean, I had people who people from my past who had hurt me and they reached out and would tell me how much my book helped them grow from their struggles and become a better person. And it was just an amazing, really, really amazing feeling that encouraged me to keep going. Okay. All right. And that's, that's interesting. Cause I look, I have uh mental health tattoos. I have a uh, Bible verse Philippians and um, also on my arm, I have love yourself first. You know, sometimes I, I love that. You know, we have depression and we have all kinds of issues and we become people pleasers and all of that. So sometimes I just kind of do this and I remind myself that, you know, so I, I appreciate that mental health tattoo because a lot of people don't realize that, a lot of the tattoos that people get are like mental health. It helps us. It's, it's symbolic. Yes, absolutely. I've got over 20 tattoos and it started off as a form of um, therapy for me. It was mm. that was where I went to express myself. I didn't know how to put my thoughts into words. So I used the art and my body as a canvas mm. to create these, how I was feeling these moments of my life and capture these expressions. I mean, tattoos are so powerful. They are. So speaking of therapy and coping, I know as an adult, you know, after you met your wife, she was able to help you get through things. But as a child, how did you, do you remember how you coped with your mental health issues or did you know you even had them at that point? No, um, I, I wasn't diagnosed with any mental illness. Um, I was diagnosed cyclothymic at uh, 17. Okay. Um, misdiagnosed, I should say. I was re-diagnosed bipolar 1 in um, whenever I was 22. Okay. So it was between 17 and 22 was whenever I was really finding out who I was and about my mental health. Um, as a child, my coping mechanisms were writing and being with my grandmother and my grandfather. Um, they were, they helped my mom raise me as a kid. My mom was a single mom who worked her tail off to, you know, be able to support me and my brother and get us the things that we needed and go above and beyond for us. And my grandparents were there to make sure she could do that. But they provided a safe space for me and my brother, um, you know, for the moments when the darkness did come um, or, you know, my brother and I went through some very traumatic stuff through our childhood. And, you know, just that contributed a lot to my mental illness um, and just being able to have that safe space of my grandma and my grandfather's house. Um, was something that got me through almost every single day. Okay. Wow. What was the first condition you said that they misdiagnosed you? What was the name of it? It's a uh, cyclothymia. It's basically, um, it's a, I, I, the way the doctor explained it to me is it's a lesser form of bipolar. So it's like bipolar, but the mood swings don't last as long and they're not as intense. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I may have fudged the um, the test that I took to make it not as bad. So that right. may have been on me for the misdiagnosis. But yeah. OK. All right. So I know like the title, of course, is traveling for mental health. So that's why I want to tie that in. So explain how you use your traveling to help with your mental health. Before we started um, traveling full time, traveling was something that we did every year um, or, you know, at least once a year. We would travel to a different state. We made it a habit. We've been together for, let's see, 2015, so eight years now. Um, and she we wanted to be able to escape the reality that we were living in and escape the hustle and bustle of life. So we would take these trips and it eventually became a thing for me where it helped me calm down and it helped me become a more grounded and more connected to the earth and one with nature and 
it was a really good feeling. So when we started traveling full time, I noticed that my mental health was has been getting a lot better. I feel happier. I feel in a space where I, you know, because one day I can wake up at the beach and the next day I'm in the mountains mm. and then the next day I'm at the side of a lake. There are so many different possibilities and the change of scenery. I think one of the hardest things of having a mental illness is being stuck in a cycle or stuck in a rut where you feel like you can't get out. And by traveling, I'm getting out of that rut by moving every couple of weeks, by getting away from whatever may have been holding me back in that specific location. I'm developing myself and learning these new experiences, meeting these new people and growing as a human being. Okay. Yeah, they say variety is the spice of life. Absolutely. And you're you're living it. Okay. Um, so I know you also travel with two others. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we have two pups, uh, Dutch and Belle. Um, hmm. They are our lives. We don't have any kids. We just have our two dogs, which they are our kids. Yes. Um, so... You know, it's it's fun. They they keep us. Um, my my dog Dutch or our dog Dutch has been a very big uh, form of therapy for me. He actually came to me in 2017, 2018, whenever um, I was going through a really rough time at my job. Um, mm-hmm. Was going through some trials and tribulations. Was facing layoffs and things like that. And on top of that, I wasn't taking my medicine. Um, mm-hmm. And so whenever we got him, he took care of me. You know, I my body started to shut down, my immune system shut down, and I got uh, pneumonia, bronchitis, and the flu and strep throat all back to back to back to back. Um, and he was there for me. You know, I had a roommate at the time, and my roommate would, you know, slide food underneath the door. But, you know, otherwise he didn't want to get sick. And I, I can't say I blame him, but right. I, had my, I had my dog. And he, you know, they they really we were concerned because, like I said, we had the big backyard, you know, the land and the big house. And, you know, we were a little concerned that they weren't going to adjust well, but I think they really have. I think they like being a lot closer to us and, being, you know, because with the house, you you my wife worked in the office. I worked in the living room. The dog slept in the bedroom or the kitchen. So we never none of us saw each other. You know, right. not dogs or me and my wife, we never saw each other during the day. And now, you know, I'm sitting right across from my wife whenever I'm working every day. And my dogs are laying right beside me or underneath the table. And it's just, I've got my family there. I've mm. got my family here. Um, but we are embarking on a interesting challenge this weekend. Um, last weekend, we took one of our nephews to uh, Jellystone National Park in Tabor City, North Carolina. This weekend, we are taking four of our nephews to Jellystone <laughs> Park in an RV with two dogs and two adults. So, oh, wow. we, uh, yeah, so if um, after this airs, I am uh, no longer <laughs> sane, please know that I tried. <laughs> right. I'll be looking forward to the next blog. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That, that may be what I need to do. Do not travel with four kids here. Here's <laughs> why your top five reasons. Oh, wow. That is funny. Okay. So looking at, at your perspective, um, cause you, you, you have adjusted well, it seems like to dealing with your mental health. How is your perspective on that mental health now as it was, as opposed to, back 17, 18, 19, when you first uh, started going to get help? Whenever I first was diagnosed, I thought I was a freak. I thought I was, you know, I, I, I thought I would never be normal. I thought my life would be filled with more issues than Vogue magazine could ever put out. And, mm. you know, I, I, I was so afraid that I would never find love that, I would never find friendship that my family would leave me. They would abandon me. So I kept it a secret for the longest time. I didn't tell anybody except for, you know, my mom, my brother didn't even know for about three years. Um, 
and that that was a really really tough thing to go through because you feel so alone and you don't have anybody to talk to. But now I, I've definitely gotten to the point where I've accepted my mental illness. It's part of who I am. It's there's no difference in me having bipolar disorder or anxiety or depression and somebody having high blood pressure or diabetes. You know, it's still an illness just because it's a mental illness doesn't take away from the validity of it being an illness. And I think that was one thing that I had to learn. And I'm very passionate about trying to um, make people realize that just because you have a mental illness it doesn't mean you're less of a person. Like I said, you know, you wouldn't go to a cancer patient and tell them that they were less of a person because they had cancer. So why would you ever go to somebody who has a mental illness and tell them they were less of a person because of their mental illness? Right. That's so true. Okay. Um, so outside of your wife and your two babies, what is your biggest success? I think Tea with Coffee Media has been one of my biggest successes. We um, we started in 2021, um, late 2021, early 2022, and we published our first book in 2022 and have published a at least one book a month since. Um, some months we have published two books. We have um, had our best month as far as sales go ever this month and we are 10 days into the month so you know we where things are looking up i've helped so many authors um and not even just the authors my staff as well we i've hired a lot of indie designers um graphic designers and editors and cover designers and book formatters and marketers and I'm trying to build this community of up and coming and growing professionals and people who want to do better. And I want to be the, a mentor for them that helps propel them to the next level. Um, I know how important my mentors were for me in my life and how they got me to where I was. And I want to be that for other people if I can. I'm in, finally in a good spot in my life where I feel like I can provide real value to other people, and that's what I'm here to do. So the Tea with Coffee, you know, I'm able to do that. I'm able to help people. And the Witkowski Company, I just started uh, – I've been doing marketing consultation on the side for since 2020 um, through this, the Witkowski Company. But I just rebranded into a strictly nonprofit's um, – this month so hopefully that will be uh, also a, one of my biggest successes because i want to help as many nonprofits as possible um you know they i've spent a lot of time on nonprofit boards in my decade of experience and um you know it's just it's really motivational to see the work that these people put in and i want to be able to offer them affordable marketing and public relations services okay that that is Tyler. That is a lot. Where do you find the time to do it? I mean, you're on the road. You're driving. Where do you find the time to do something that that takes so much? Yeah, that's um, a question that I'm still asking myself. I, don't, I really don't know. There's not enough hours in the day. Wow. Um, no, you know, it's it's uh, dedication, putting in the time and the effort and. You know, with my writing, I sit down and I say, I'm going to write 15 to 30 minutes every day. I set aside time during my lunch to just do nothing but write. And I try, I, I'm very organized, um, use calendars, use a plethora of different apps like Calendly and Linktree and others um, to keep myself organized and keep, you know, make sure I'm not forgetting things because that's the biggest challenge is especially whenever, you know, you're running an indie publishing company and you've got clients for this marketing company plus the blogs. It does take up a lot of time, but I really enjoy it. And I think that's why I'm so able and willing to do it for, you know, because I, I'll work from 8 a.m. in the morning to uh, 12 a.m. in the morning sometimes, um, you know, 
it's and I I do it because I enjoy it. Okay, so what makes something indie? Um, basically being independent of your mainstream. Um, so for like books being outside of the big uh, five book uh, <clears throat> book publishers like Penguin Random House and McGraw Hill and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so that you know, indie music is underground, self-published, or small. Um, typically, you know, they really there's there's actually a monetary amount that they go off of to determine what is considered indie and small, but um, I don't know exactly what it is. But it it's based on you know how your sales look and um, you know how you compete compared to others on the market. Okay. All right. That's and I always hear indie films, indie books, but I never quite knew what indie was. I was like, what is indie? Like, what does that mean? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I know you said your grandmother was one of your biggest influences. So would that would she be one of the biggest, like altogether one of the biggest influences on your life? Um, yeah, her uh and my my grandfather. My grandfather just passed away um uh, in April. Sorry, he yes. uh was he he fought cancer uh beat it once and it came back but he was one of the strongest men i knew um he taught me how to be a strong person he taught me how to hunt how to fish how to drive he was like a father to me growing up he i you know whenever i lost him i felt like i had lost my own father um but he always believed in me, no matter what. He believed that I was capable and able to do anything I put my mind to. And without his strength and without his you know, support, I don't know where I would be. Because he was the only man, you know, as somebody who suffers from bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder, you know, my anger is... It's there. It, it's 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 definitely there. And whenever I was a kid, it was even worse. And I used to get mad and take it out on my family. But he was the one person that I could never get mad at, no matter what. And I miss him. Um, you know, so the other day, uh, whenever we went to Tabor City uh, for the Jellystone National Park with my nephew, um, I ended up with a fishing hook in my hand. <laughs> and uh, my wife sat with my nephew in the car and I was sitting in the back of the hospital and all I could sit there and do was laugh because I'm like, he's up there laughing at me. He's like, you should have known better than that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I try to think of the good times and the good memories and I, I try to talk about them because um, I, I lost my great grandfather whenever uh, in 2007 and uh, that was my first real experience with death. And a friend of mine gave me some advice that I've never forgotten. And, you know, here we are almost 20 years later. And it was as long as you keep his memory alive, he will always be alive. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And from that moment on, whenever I lost people in my life, it was, yeah, it was sad and it hurt. But there was also celebration of their life. And I could rejoice in the memories that we spent together and that we made together so i still have my memories of him and i still have pieces of him um but he he will always always be one of the people i look up to because even though he's not with us he is the greatest man i know okay um if you could talk to 17 year old tyler what would you tell him um, I'd tell him two things. First thing I would tell him is leave that girl. Um, <laughs> uh, second thing is I would tell him don't give up. Um, there were a lot of times that 17 year old Tyler wanted to give up and there were quite a few times where he tried to give up. Um, and I would tell him don't do that. It's going to get better. You've just got to fight. And, you know, the things that I did in my past could have ruined so many lives, not just mine. 
and you know making that clear to that 17 year old Tyler that you're just as normal as you were the day before your diagnosis as you were the day after you're yeah. still normal you never changed you're still Tyler mm. I like that. Okay. Um, so that actually kind of answers my next question, which would be what advice do you have to someone who probably is recently diagnosed with a mental condition? How, what advice would you give them? You know, that's, um, that's a really good question because I've got a friend who was just recently diagnosed bipolar. Um, and she came to me looking for advice because she kind of felt defeated and and like the universe was beating up on her by adding on this disorder to her already disorderly life. And I told her, I was like, yeah, but just imagine, think about all the things that you've accomplished this far, not knowing that you were bipolar or Ooh. schizophrenic or had anxiety or depression or whatever it may be. And look at where you are right now. Now imagine what you can do once you get the right medication and the right help. Mm. You've come this far in your life, and you are this successful. Now imagine what you can do from here on out. Hey, hold your head up high because you've done it, and now is a new chapter for you to turn the page in your book. That is so true. That's some good. That, that's that's some really good advice. I never thought about it like that. You've done well this you know thus far. You can't let a diagnosis that you didn't even know you had a week ago change your life. Exactly. I, I like that. Okay. So I know we kind of briefly spoke about some of your books. I know you have a, a bunch and I see you got a lot of coffee in the back. I, I have a feeling you like coffee. Uh, big coffee fan. Big coffee fan. I actually <laughs> um, just partnered with uh, Fresh Roasted Coffee at LLC. Um, so... Uh, that was a huge thing for me um, because, like you said, I do love coffee. Um, you know, there's my main logo for my author brand is a uh, coffee cup uh, made out of a brain. And then, uh, of course, with Tea with Coffee Media, there's the coffee cup with the play button. Um, that's kind of a little hint at our future. Um mm -hmm. And then with the uh, the Witkowski company, I kind of used that same style as my author brand, but just used uh, more of a minimalistic uh, version. And if you look really carefully at the Adventure with Coffee co uh, logo, both me and my wife are holding a cup of coffee in there. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see. I like the coffee. And I see um, somebody wants to play piano now that I'm having to talk. Um, All right. Okay. Um, I saw that one of your books also was with coffee. I forgot the title, but I liked it. That's the one I wanted to tell you about. Um, so tell us about, about your books. Yeah. Um, so my first book was not alone. Um, it was a novella, uh, which is a shorter version of a novel. Um, it's less than 35,000 words. A novel is more than 35,000. And, um, it, it just, like I said, it started off based on true events uh, about my life and things that I had experienced with my mental illness. And it developed into a very realistic and hard hitting story. Um, I actually rewrote it a couple of uh, months ago and made it to a full novel. So I added on about 25,000 words to the book, oh, wow. to the manuscript. So I almost doubled it. Um, and. I was uh, – that will release in October, so I'm really okay. excited about that. It adds a lot more depth, and there's a lot more to the story. Um, the book that you were referring to was my poetry collection, Coffee, Alcohol, and Heartbreak. Um, I Yep, I wrote those books uh, or those poems from 2012 to 2016 um, whenever I was uh, not on medication. So it was during a really dark period of my time. Um, the poems are a mix of – it's a very different spectrum of emotions throughout the entire book. Um, it it's, takes you through the journey of a bipolar mind. Mm. Um, 
my next book was the Sunflower Kisses book one, The Seeds of Love, which is um, the first of a five book series. Uh, I will be the second one will be coming out in 2025. But uh, the first one centers around a mentally ill young man who is uh, falls in love with this young girl and they overcome the challenges of a long distance relationship and going from uh, the friends to lovers and dealing with uh, the main character Clay's struggles with mental illness and how uh, the female main character Bailey overcomes those challenges. Ooh, okay. My most recent book that uh, released in July of 2023 uh, was Enamored Echoes Book One, Hope, which was co authored by me and uh, my best friend Kelsey Ann La- Lovelady. We both wrote the book. Uh, we alternated chapters, so it's actually a dual point of view book. One chapter is written from uh, the voice of Oberon, and the other chapter is voiced by is the voice of Titania from A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. It's basically a uh, modern day take on that throws them into throws fairies into the modern world um we also did something really unique with that book we used um non-binary pronouns uh fey fair instead of um instead of they there to express a difference in the non-binary pronouns and include um and make it more inclusive because we have had um, an author with tea with coffee media who identifies by the fay fair pronouns and we thought it would be good to include that and raise awareness for those other non-conventional non-binary terms okay all right that that is true that diversity equity and inclusion i'm big on i'm sorry i'm big on that so i I like that um, you have incorporated that into your work. Yes. Awesome. Yes, I have. Okay, so um, there was a question. Oh, about, I wanted to ask about, sorry, the book with the love. Clay, I believe you said? Yes. The guy who had the, is that, how do you, how did you get inspired to do that? Was it inspired on, you know, your, your life? Um, some of the events were inspired on my life. Um, I think all of my writing has a touch of my life in it um, okay. or inspiration from somebody in my life. Uh, but really, it it was kind of a ode to me and my wife um, because we did spend the first three of three years of our relationship in a long distance relationship. Um, a lot of the stuff is revolves around things that happened to us. Some of it is just completely made up, so it's not even really based on a true story per se, but it is, um, it's an ode to our love story. Okay, that's sweet. I love it. All right, so I know I can, I'll put your link in the description for, for the videos and for the podcast, but is there a certain place that people can purchase your books and, or, and let them know where they can follow you? Yeah, so uh, I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, YouTube, and LinkedIn, um, and you can find me. I'm at Tyler Witkowski, W-I-T-T-K-O-F-S-K-Y, on all platforms. Um, my website is TylerWitkowski.com. You can find a link to all my books there. You can find all of my books on Tea with Coffee Media. Um, or you can visit my link tree, which is linktr.ee slash Tyler Witkowski. And that's got links to literally anything you need to know about me on the Internet. Gotcha. OK, that's perfect. So I think that was a, a great interview that we did. I appreciate you for telling your story because I forgot the numbers, but the numbers on mental health here in America are extremely high. And those are the people that actually got diagnosed. There are several people that are scared to go in. Um, And a lot of times it's because of shame 
they yeah. they don't feel that they can you know go on just like you said you know sometimes they don't know they don't want to accept it um so i appreciate you sharing your story and you being vulnerable enough to tell your story to other people and help people even with the books and the stories because i know you have uh i forgot the characters the name of the type of books you have like the fantasy books you have some horror books and stuff like that you can catch people from all walks of life and you can kind of help them out so i appreciate what you're doing tyler thank you donna it's been a real pleasure talking with you and you know getting to share my story with your audience Perfect. And I hope uh, you all support Tyler and everything that he has going on. And when he starts his own coffee company, I want y'all to make sure y'all go get a cup from him. <laughs> the coffee there guy. you go. Yeah. And um, like I said, I'll be looking forward to your blog this weekend. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Have fun. And thank you so much for being a part today. Thanks, Donna. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.